All right, back to project shop house septic system. So I'm standing up here where the house is going to be located. This is facing west. You can see it's about uh, sunset time here. So looking down the hill, it actually goes down and back up. So this septic system is a pressure dosing system and it will dose effluent in 125 gallon batches out to that drain field. That's the soil treatment area. And there's four beds. Each bed is 12 feet wide, 100 feet long. So it's a total of 400 of the infiltrator chambers. And then it's got the end caps. And uh, we'll go take a closer look at the manifolds and the uh, clean out valves. And also where the cammed uh, mechanical distribution valve is located. It's an automatic distribution valve, all mechanical. So every time there's a 125 gallon dose pumped to that system, it will cycle the valve. So it only floods one of the four beds at a time. Over on this side of the dry gulch will be the, it's just a standard septic tank, 2000 gallon two chamber tank. And then after the uh, normal septic tank, there'll be a dosing tank. So the dosing tank is 540 gallons. That tank will have a submerged pump with a few floats. And every time it hits the upper float for the dose, it will turn the pump on. It should run, it's a 70 gallon per minute pump, and it should run for oh, two to three minutes. And that will flood one of those beds. All right, we'll go take a closer look at the manifolds. So walking through kind of a shallow area of the dry gulch, we will have to put a culvert and a land bridge across to get the effluent pipe, as well as my electrical line from the meter and transformer. So that'll be up a little higher. And that'll take the pressure effluent line to that large white riser and you can see that riser it actually has four outputs one for each bed it only uses one of the beds at a time and inside that white riser will be that automatic distribution valve that uh, the reason it's in that riser is so it'll be serviceable replaceable uh, whatever uh, inspected if needed everything else will be buried forever hopefully so this is the manifold coming out of that riser down there is a two inch pvc pipe and then that starts the manifold on this end it steps down to inch and a half and then the inch and a half feeds all four of these rows all the way down 100 feet to the other end where you can see some pvc sticking up and there's a ball valve on the end and those are cleanouts. So normally those ball valves will just be closed. This is a pressurized system. So when the pump is running, it'll pressurize and fill the entire length of all four of these inch and a half PVC pipes. And there are holes drilled in the top of it. There's um, a hole every four feet facing up. So that sprays into the top of the dome. And then there's a hole on either end which is a drain hole. So after the pump runs, this is a downhill run to each of the beds from the distribution valve, which has its own vacuum breaker built in. That will allow all of the effluent to then drain out with gravity to the manifold and out those bottom weep holes after each dose. Uh, it's only about, well, the bottom is about two feet deep at the shallow point, a little more on the deep point. So you got a foot of dirt on top of these chambers. So you do have to worry about potential freezing in a long, cold stretch. Uh, so that's why we'll drain the pipes out every single time it doses. That valve at the top will also be, it's an uphill pump from the dosing tank, which will be, uh, 
over there somewhere. I don't know exactly where yet. I'm waiting to get all the plumbing done in the house till I set the uh, septic tank at the right location and depth. But it'll be four feet underground and that will give a nice uphill run with the pressurized effluent line to the valve. So on that run, there'll be a weep hole near the pump to back drain. So it'll drain both directions. So all of the pipes will kind of uh, clear out and not freeze. All four of these beds are identical. Uh, on the far end there, I've got the large diameter four inch pipe, uh, the STR35 drain pipe. And those are just inspection pipes. Go check those out. I have to install them on these corners as well. We've got the hole drilled in the end cap. So it's really just an inspection port. So you could look down there and just see the dirt. This system didn't require gravel or sand or anything else. We just had to scarify the, the local soil and then the chambers take care of the rest. The chambers have a, a design where the dirt can't fall in the sides, but they have louvers cut into them to allow it to micro leach, they call it. So the, the moisture will just kind of bleed out. Some will go sideways, some will go down. Uh, now we'll walk down there and we'll check out the valves. So with this system, it had to be undisturbed dirt in between each bed. So this is a six foot wide strip and the 12 foot wide beds. So this can't be driven on or disturbed. It had to be natural settling, however it, however it lies. So on the far end of the beds here, we've got a long sweep to a ball valve, and then that's not a glued-in cap, that's just uh, set in as a dust cap. These will be accessible with little uh, sprinkler boxes, and you can open up that ball valve and back jet these pipes, kind of a maintenance operation. I don't know how often you'll have to do it, but it just keeps all those tiny little holes. They're only five 30 seconds holes, so if they get to, uh, they start to scum up or anything you'll have less flow maybe the pump will be running longer or maybe you'll have a backup who knows but this gives you a maintenance point to clear out all the way down to the manifold on the other end and you can just back jet it with a pressure jet and here's those inspection pipes these will stick out with a uh, stick out of the ground they'll be all leveled and it gives you a, a way to drop a camera or a flashlight or take a sample, whatever the inspection calls for. This is a pretty good, pretty big job. A lot of digging. I got piles of dirt everywhere. Kind of took it a layer at a time. Uh, as it got hard to dig, we would only go a few inches at a time. We'd use the excavator with a laser and just cut a level layer off and scoop it out and, and continue. From this angle, you can see the slope. It's a 14% uh, grade here, so the beds are, are stair-stepped down. Uh, each one's about 13 inches lower than the one uh, above it. So, uh, this is ready for inspection. I've got an inspection coming up in a day or two, and obviously I don't have the entire system done because I don't have the pressure tank I don't have electricity to run the pumps. I don't have a house to drain into the tanks. So what we're doing is we're doing this in phases. This soil treatment area will be inspected as is up to the valve riser. And then uh, we just want permission to cover it up with all this dirt. It's kind of a mix of dirt as you dig. Some was sandy, some was harder clay. Some was actually pretty nice topsoil. So we're gonna end up putting the topsoil towards the top so we can revegetate, which is native grasses, nothing with tap roots or heavy roots of any kind. So back here at the riser, that'll be bolted down. Hopefully not need maintenance or repair or replacement very often, but it's accessible. The grass will just grow up around this and uh, probably won't even notice it. 
So that's the pressure dosing soil treatment area. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. One major step towards Project Shop House.